Greetings. This is Chaplain Bob Walker, Light of the World Ministries. In John 8, 12, Jesus said, I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. I'm getting over a cold. If my voice sounds a little funny. Forgive me. The text for this study is going to be Revelation chapter 13 and Daniel chapter 7. Now, I think what I'm going to do is do an introduction speaking, then have the um, Alexander Scorby, S-C-O-U-R-B-Y. You can get at him his uh, wonderful voice reading the King James Bible, which you're going to be listening to on CD or MP3, whatever you're interested in. Uh, Amazon has it. Hendrickson Bible Publishers has it. Uh, personally, I'd rather you buy it from Hendrickson themselves. But but the uh, he, Daniel, when they were in Babylon, Daniel was one of the royal princes of the tribe of Judah that was carried away from Jerusalem to Babylon, which was the first major kingdom. And he was given his, uh, I, I'm not sure, I think it was a vision or what have you, but there were four beasts. One of them was a lion. Now think about a lion. You've got Jesus, who is called the Lion of the tribe of Judah. All right, in Genesis chapter 49 and verse 9, it says Judah. Now, Judah was the tribe of the kings. And uh, Levites, the Levites, another different tribe of Israel, they were to be the tribes of the priests. They were the ones that were to service God's tabernacle. But in Genesis 49 and verse 9, it says, Judah is a lion's whelp. From the prey, my son, thou art gone up. He stooped down, he crouched as a lion, and as an old lion, who shall rouse him up? And uh, you don't want to rouse up an old lion. You know, we're not talking about a little cub here. We're, we're talking about a full-grown lion. You don't want to be messing with a lion. King of the jungle, right? Now, in Revelation 5, they uh, let's start in verse... Uh, maybe we should start from the beginning. Revelation 5, verse 1. And I saw the right hand of him that sat on the throne, a book written within and on the backside, sealed with seven seals. And I saw a strong angel proclaiming with a loud voice, who is worthy to open the book and to loose the seals thereof? Well, that ain't me. Verse 3. And no man in heaven nor on earth, neither under the earth, was able to open the book, neither to look thereon. And I wept much, because no man was found worthy to open and to read the book, neither to look thereon. And one of the elders saith unto me, Weep not, behold, the lion of the tribe of Judah, the root of David. And that's Christ. If you don't know that, you got a problem. Behold, the lion of the tribe of Judah, the root of David, hath prevailed to open the book and to loose the seven seals thereof. And I beheld lo in the midst of the throne and of the four beasts and in the midst of the elders stood a lamb as it had been slain having seven horns and seven eyes, which are the seven spirits of God sent forth into all the earth. Okay, this is Christ. Now, contrast that with 1 Peter 5 and verse 8, where it says, Be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary, the devil, as... A roaring lion walketh about seeking whom he may devour. So be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary the, de the devil, as a roaring lion, 
walketh about seeking whom he may devour. So, there you go. Now, then you got the leopard. You got a lion, you got a leopard, you got a bear, and then you got the end time beast. That was totally different than all the others. And I know they've got these little formulas and they say, well, this animal's this kingdom and this animal's that kingdom and you know, the end time beast is going to be the Roman Empire revived and this and that and the other. And I don't think so. I really don't think so. Um, but that's just my opinion. I'll tell you what. They don't mention the, uh, the Ottoman Empire, which was in existence for like 500 years and a huge empire. I mean, the Muslims, the Ottoman Empire took over uh, parts of Romania, parts of Austria, um, parts of Italy, parts of Greece. Turkey used to be called uh, Greece. It, you know, Istanbul is, was Constantinople or the Byzant uh, Byzantine or Byz Byzantine. I mean, they were huge. They don't even mention that. But uh, what was the leopard? I have no idea. The Bible doesn't seem to give uh, enough information that I can make a 100% guess, I guess you could say, right? Now, in Daniel 7, in verse 5, uh, it says, and behold, and behold, another beast, a second like to a bear. And it raised up itself on one side, and it had three ribs in the mouth of it, between the teeth of it. And they said thus unto it, Arise, devour much flesh. So it raised itself up on one side. Could that have been the left side? You know, the... Communism under Russia was considered the second largest mass murder in history. The uh, under Joseph Stalin, untold millions of Christians were murdered by the communists. And communism is very, very kosher. If you catch my drift, the United States claimed to be against communism, but in they supported communism. Matter of fact, a lot of the support for the Russians' revolution came from New York City and Wall Street. And just so that you know, approximately 25% of New York City is Jewish. Think about that next time uh, you think about Donald Trump being the savior of the United States and think about who his daughter is married to. So, the bear. Isn't the bear the symbol of the Soviet Union? Or, well, they say it's the ex-Soviet Union, but uh, let me tell you something. Putin claims to be a Christian, but I got pictures of him with all these Hasidic rabbis you know, the Antichrist that deny Jesus. And if you don't know what an Antichrist is, let me read it for you. Simple. 1 John chapter 2, verse 22. Who is a liar? But he that denieth that Jesus is the Christ. Do Jews deny that Jesus is the Christ? Absolutely. So who is a liar? But he that denieth that Jesus is the Christ, he is Antichrist, that denieth the Father and the Son. Whosoever denieth the Son, the same hath not the Father. So if you don't have the Son, you don't have the Father either. You don't have the Father that sent the Son. Whosoever denieth the Son, the same hath not the Father, but he that acknowledgeth the Son hath the father also. Putin was a KGB agent. Matter of fact, he was a colonel. And let me tell you something. You don't get to be a colonel in the KGB by being an idiot. Unless, of course, your father is the uh, premier or dictator of Russia. That's, you know, it just doesn't happen. I mean, 
Putin is smart. He claims to be a Christian, but uh, I don't know. Now, the thing is, I'll get back to this. I'm hoping I'll get back to this. Satan's not stupid either. He's been watching us for at least five, 6,000 years. And he knows how people think, what they do. Personally, I think, well, when the end time beast comes, it's going to be military, it's going to be economic. Economic is going to be the mark of the beast. You're not going to be able to buy or sell unless you have the mark of the beast. It's, uh, they even, uh, let's see, let's read that real quick. All right, Revelation chapter 13, verse 15. And he had power to give life unto the image of the beast. Uh, this is the same thing. Uh, an image in Greek is the same thing as an idol in the Hebrew, the Old Testament. That the image of the beast should both speak and cause that as many as would not worship the image of the beast should be killed. And he causeth all, both small and great, rich and poor, free and bond, to receive a mark in their right hand or in their foreheads, and that no man might buy or sell, save he that had the mark, or the name of the beast, or the number of his name. Here is wisdom, let him that hath understanding count the number of the beast, for it is the number of a man, and his number is six hundred three score and six, 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 six. So it's going to be an economic, worldwide economic system. It says, and he causeth all. All right, so the beast system is going to be religious. You're going to worship the image of the beast or you're going to die. It's going to be economic. If you don't have the number or the name of the beast, you're not going to be able to buy or sell anything. And then in Revelation 13, verse 4, And they worshipped worshipped the dragon, which gave power unto the beast, and they worshipped the beast, saying, Who is like unto the beast? Who is able to make war with him? And the answer is, nobody's going to be able to make war with him. I mean, the Lord's going to send his two witnesses, and the beast is going to kill them. And these, the two witnesses are going to have power to bring fire down from the sky. But then again, so is the false prophet that is going to be blazing the trail for the beast, I suppose. You could say. Now, this is my thoughts. Personally, I believe, the, you know, the United States supports the Israelis, which are antichrists. They hate Jesus. They hate Christians. I mean, that's just the way they are. And Jerusalem's full of antichrists. So is Tel Aviv. And Putin... In my opinion, I believe he's pretending to be a Christian, an Eastern Orthodox Christian. And I believe that there's going to be a confrontation in the Middle East, probably, or somewhere, between the United States and Russia. I believe that there'll be a small, very limited nuclear exchange and then people will hold up their hands in the air and go, we can't have this ever happen again. I mean, we'll destroy the whole world. We've got to have a one world government. And I don't know if it's going to happen before the man of sin appears or during or after, I don't know. But I think that's how they're going to force people into the United Nations or whatever system that they have at the time. Now, you know how they love to talk about democracy. Of course, democracy only applies to the Israelis in the Middle East. The Palestinians, uh, they don't have a vote on anything. So, do you really want a bunch of third world countries like Africa and South America 
voting and deciding how things go on in the United States. It doesn't matter if you like it or not. I think it's going to happen, but we'll see. And I think we're going to have a one-world government. Uh, matter of fact, people have talked about Albert Pike predicted three world wars. We had World War I, which, uh, if you don't know about it, Count, what was his name? Francis Ferdinand. He was shot by, if you read the history books, they'll say a Serbian nationalist. No, he wasn't. He was a Jew. Or the synagogue of Satan, Revelation 2.9. And then that led the way with the, uh, the Versailles Treaty. Uh, Germany was just raked over the coals, which set the stage for the uh, Second World War. And then we supported communism in this country. I mean, let's face it. General Douglas MacArthur wanted to go into China and wipe it out after the Korean War because, let me tell you something, the Chinese sent troops uh, that killed American soldiers in Co the Korean War, or conflict, or whatever they call it. And MacArthur was like, let's nuke these bastards and bastard is a bible term by the way and that's what they are they're bastards they're not children of god communists and and the chinese and all this stuff and he wanted to nuke them and truman who supported communism relieved him one of the greatest generals this country's probably ever seen and Truman, the communist, relieved him. The only good thing Truman ever did was probably drop the bomb to end the war. But theres I've got mixed feelings about that too. Japan was beaten. I mean, I think they were just testing it. I don't think it made a real difference. But all I know is my dad was very glad that he didn't have to go to China. I mean, Japan, um, after fighting in Europe. Dad was in the 3rd Infantry Division in Europe, the most decorated unit in Europe. Perhaps you've heard of Audie Murphy. He was in the 3rd Infantry Division. General Lucien Truscott was their commander. General Eisenhower said that after Patton, Truscott was his best general. But I agree with Patton. We fought the wrong enemy in Germany. But, uh, you know, we could have easily beaten Russia and taken back Eastern Europe that was under communism. We could have, but we didn't. So we had the bomb and nobody else did it for five or so years. But So... Chinese troops killed American soldiers. Russian pilots shot down American planes over Korea. I mean, if that's not a war, what, what isn't? I mean, come on. You know, the Bible doesn't say fight with one hand behind your back. But we're not a Christian nation. I don't know if we ever were. There was a lot of Christians in this country at one time. There's not any more. I don't care what people tell me. If a, this was a Christian nation, we wouldn't have abortion legal. And we wouldn't have Satanists in prisons as chaplains. So, all right. But that's, that's um, so Albert Pike said that there would be three world wars. We had the first, we had the second. Well, guess what? The third's coming. And I believe it's going to be between the United States and Russia, but that's just my guess. And your guess is just as valid as mine. And uh, maybe try to fold us into this one world beast system. Now there are people that will tell you that in 70 AD when the Roman Empire destroyed the temple at Jerusalem that all of Matthew 24 was fulfilled and blah, blah, blah. You know, let me tell you something. They have to totally explain away everything in the book of Revelation. Everything. They have to explain away everything. Because 
they can't answer it. And besides, the general that destroyed the temple in Jerusalem, his name was Titus, a general. Can you imagine a general proclaiming himself that he's the God? He's God. Hmm. Now, in 1 Corinthians 3 and verse 16, Paul writes, Know ye not that ye are the temple of God, and the Spirit of God dwelleth in you. So, why do we need a temple? So, in 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 1, Now we beseech you, brethren, by the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ, and by our gathering together unto him, that ye be not soon shaken in mind, or be troubled, neither by spirit, nor by word, nor by letter, as from us, as that day, as that the day of Christ is at hand. Let no man deceive you by any means. For that day, what day? The second coming. For that day shall not come, except there come a falling away first, and that man of sin be revealed the son of perdition, who opposeth and exalteth himself above all that is called God or that is worshipped. Isn't that what we read in Revelation 13? Or that is worshipped, so that he as God sitteth in the temple of God, showing himself that he is God. I don't think General Titus would have told the Roman emperor who was the king of the entire Roman Empire, I don't think a mere general is going to tell, tell the emperor of Rome that I'm God and you got to worship me. Besides, there's nothing in recorded history of that ever happening. So this has to be the future, if you ask me. Now, in Daniel chapter 12, uh, maybe I should read the whole chapter. Verse 1, And at that time shall Michael stand up, the great prince which standeth for the children of thy people, and there shall be a time of trouble, such as never was since there was a nation, even to that same time. And at that time thy people shall be delivered, every one that shall be found written in the book. Didn't we just read in Revelation about the book? You know, it had the seals and nobody was worthy no man was found worthy in heaven or on earth or under the earth except for the, the lion of the tribe of judah right verse 2 and many of them that sleep in the dust of the earth shall awake some to everlasting life and some to shame and everlasting contempt and they that be wise shall shine as the brightness of the firmament and they that turn many to righteousness as the stars forever and ever. But thou, O Daniel, shut up the words and seal the book, even to the end, even to the time of the end. But thou, O Daniel, shut up the words and seal the book, even to the time of the end. Many shall run to and fro, and knowledge shall be increased. Isn't that what happened in our generation? I mean, let's face it. People were using horses for uh, 5,000 something years for transportation. And then all of a sudden, uh, less than 200 years ago, trains came on the scene and then planes. And now, I mean, it's just amazing. Jets. Uh, look at the internet. Knowledge has been increased. Not necessarily godly knowledge. I mean, it could be some godly knowledge. We're going to know things, uh, well, I don't know, necessarily us, but the people that live in the end times, they're going to understand stuff that the prophets and the apostles, they had no idea. I mean, when it comes, they're going to, they're going to understand because the Holy Spirit will give them wisdom. Many shall run to and fro, and knowledge shall be increased. Then I, Daniel, looked, and behold, there stood an other two, the one on this side of the bank of the river, and the other on that side of the bank of the river. And one said to the man clothed in linen, which was upon the waters of the river, How long shall it be to the end of these wonders? 
And I heard the man clothed in linen, which was upon the waters of the river, when he held up his right hand and his left hand unto heaven, and swear by him that liveth for ever, that it shall be for a time, times, and a half. That language comes right out of the book of Revelation. I'll get back to that. And when he shall accomplish to scatter the power of the holy people, all these things shall be finished. All right, let's take a look at Revelation 12, 12 real quick. Therefore rejoice, ye heavens, and ye that dwell in them. Woe to the inhabitants of the earth and of the sea, for the devil... For the devil is come down unto you, having great wrath, because he knoweth that he hath but a short time. And when the dragon saw that he was cast under the earth, he persecuted the woman which brought forth the man-child. And to the woman were given two wings of a great eagle, that she might fly into the wilderness, into her place where she is nourished for a time and times and half a time from the face of the serpent. And the serpent cast out of his mouth water as a flood after the woman that he might cause her to be carried away the flood. And the earth helped the woman and the earth opened her mouth and swallowed up the flood which the dragon cast out of his mouth. Personally, I think that's an earthquake. And the dragon was wroth with the woman and went to make war with the remnant of her seed which keep the commandments of God and have the testimony of Jesus Christ. Uh, if you go back to, you know, we could read this whole chapter, really, but I'm going to kind of skip around. I did a three-part series on Revelation chapter 12. And that's why I don't want to get into it real detailed. If you're interested in Revelation 12, I do a fairly in-depth study on it. So, verse uh, 5. And she brought forth a man-child who was to rule all nations with a rod of iron, that's Christ, and her child was caught up unto God into his throne. And the woman fled into the wilderness where she had a place prepared to God that they should feed her there a thousand Two hundred and three score days. That's a time, a year, times, two more years, and a half. That's three and a half years, people. So, if you let it, the King James Bible will interpret the King James Bible. So, where's this last beast going to rule from? Well, I tell you what, I did a Bible study on Mystery Babylon, and my conclusion was Jerusalem. I mean, that's going to be God's, uh, the ultimate slap in the face for God. I mean, let's face it, the Jews are going to want to rebuild the temple, do animal sacrifice as a de denial of God the Father sending his son and what he did on the cross, and it's going to be the kingdom of the Antichrist. Of course it's going to be Jerusalem. The, the beast is going to go to the temple and proclaim himself to be God. I mean, he's going to... Jerusalem's going to be the capital, the world capital, basically. And that's going to be the ultimate slap in the face of the Lord God in heaven and earth, of heaven and earth. So, all right, so that's my conclusion and uh, now listen, you get to listen to Alexander Scorby uh, on read the book of Dan uh, a chapter in the book of Daniel and a book in Revelation, which I think when you read about the horns, uh, it all adds up if you ask me. Also, I was thinking about writing a Christian novel, um, sort of cow my take on how the end times will play out and many of the heresies that are prevalent in the modern day church. Um, I don't know. What do you think about it? I don't know. I've been wanting to write a book for 20 something years and honestly I'm just about done with Bible studies. I mean I've got almost 800 of them. 
seven or eight hundred Bible studies. I mean, you know, but um, there's going to be a lot of people fooled. A lot. Trust me, when people uh, figure out that when, when the when the, the man of sin, son of perdition appears, you watch. Uh, the Benny Hens, the Copelands, Hagens, Kenyans, the Joyce Myers, the Billy Grahams, all those people, all the TBN crowd, um, Sid Roth, it's a supernatural. They're all going to proclaim that the beast is the Christ. You watch. And the way the world worships the Jews, not the king of the Jews, which is Jesus the Christ, but they worship the Jews. You watch. It'll happen. So, all right. So let's, uh, like I said, if you like Alexander Scorby, S-C-O-U-R-B-Y, you could order it from Hendrickson Christian Publishing, or you can go to Amazon or whatever. I don't make any money on the deal, but he's going to be the one reading from now on. All right, enjoy uh, Daniel and Revelation chapters being read coming up. All blessings, praise, glory, and honor to the Lamb of God, slain before the foundation of the world. And that's Jesus who is the Christ. Amen. Stay tuned for more. Chapter 7 In the first year of Belshazzar, king of Babylon, Daniel had a dream and visions of his head upon his bed. Then he wrote the dream and told the sum of the matters. Daniel spake and said, I saw in my vision by night, and behold, the four winds of the heavens strove upon the great sea. And four great beasts came up from the sea, diverse one from another. The first was like a lion, and had eagle's wings. I beheld till the wings thereof were plucked, and it was lifted up from the earth, and made stand upon the feet as a man, and a man's heart was given to it. And behold, another beast, a second, like to a bear, and it raised up itself on one side, and it had three ribs in the mouth of it between the teeth of it. And they said thus unto it, Arise, devour much flesh. After this I beheld, and lo, another like a leopard, which had upon the back of it four wings of a fowl. The beast had also four heads, and dominion was given to it. After this I saw in the night visions, and behold a fourth beast, dreadful and terrible, and strong exceedingly. And it had great iron teeth. It devoured and brake in pieces, and stamped the residue with the feet of it. And it was diverse from all the beasts that were before it. And it had ten horns. I considered the horns, and behold, there came up among them another little horn, before whom there were three of the first horns plucked up by the roots. And behold, in this horn were eyes, like the eyes of man, and a mouth, speaking great things. I beheld till the thrones were cast down, and the Ancient of Days did sit, whose garment was white as snow, and the hair of his head like the pure wool. His throne was like the fiery flame, and his wheels as burning fire. A fiery stream issued and came forth from before him. Thousand thousands ministered unto him, and ten thousand times ten thousand stood before him. The judgment was set, and the books were opened. I beheld then, because of the voice of the great words which the horn spake, I beheld even till the beast was slain and his body destroyed and given to the burning flame. As concerning the rest of the beasts, they had their dominion taken away, yet their lives were prolonged for a season and time. I saw in the night visions, and behold, one like the Son of Man came with the clouds of heaven, and came to the Ancient of Days, and they brought him near before him. And there was given him dominion and glory and a kingdom, that all people, nations, and languages should serve him. His dominion is an everlasting dominion, which shall not pass away, and his kingdom that which shall not be destroyed. I, Daniel, was grieved in my spirit in the midst of my body, and the visions of my head troubled me. I came near unto one of them that stood by, and asked him the truth of all this. So he told me, and made me know the interpretation of the things. These great beasts, which are four, are four kings which shall arise out of the earth. But the saints of the Most High shall take the kingdom, and possess the kingdom forever, even forever and ever. 
Then I would know the truth of the fourth beast, which was diverse from all the others, exceeding dreadful, whose teeth were of iron and his nails of brass, which devoured, break in pieces, and stamped the residue with his feet, and of the ten horns that were in his head, and of the other which came up, and before whom three fell, even of that horn that had eyes, and a mouth that spake very great things, whose look was more stout than his fellows. I beheld, and the same horn made war with the saints, and prevailed against them until the Ancient of Days came, and judgment was given to the saints of the Most High, and the time came that the saints possessed the kingdom. Thus he said, The fourth beast shall be the fourth kingdom upon earth, which shall be diverse from all kingdoms, and shall devour the whole earth, and shall tread it down, and break it in pieces. And the ten horns out of this kingdom are ten kings that shall arise, and another shall rise after them, and he shall be diverse from the first, and he shall subdue three kings. And he shall speak great words against the Most High, and shall wear out the saints of the Most High, and think to change times and laws. And they shall be given into his hand until a time and times and the dividing of time. But the judgment shall sit, and they shall take away his dominion to consume and to destroy it unto the end. And the kingdom and dominion and the greatness of the kingdom under the whole heaven shall be given to the people of the saints of the Most High, whose kingdom is an everlasting kingdom, and all dominions shall serve and obey him. Hitherto is the end of the matter. As for me, Daniel, my cogitations much troubled me, and my countenance changed in me. But I kept the matter in my heart. Chapter 13 And I stood upon the sand of the sea, and saw a beast rise up out of the sea, having seven heads and ten horns, and upon his horns ten crowns, and upon his heads the name of blasphemy. And the beast which I saw was like unto a leopard, and his feet were as the feet of a bear, and his mouth as the mouth of a lion. And the dragon gave him his power, and his seat, and great authority. And I saw one of his heads as it were wounded to death, and his deadly wound was healed, and all the world wondered after the beast. And they worshipped the dragon which gave power unto the beast, and they worshipped the beast, saying, Who is like unto the beast? Who is able to make war with him? And there was given unto him a mouth, speaking great things and blasphemies, and power was given unto him to continue forty and two months. And he opened his mouth in blasphemy against God, to blaspheme his name and his tabernacle and them that dwell in heaven. And it was given unto him to make war with the saints and to overcome them and power was given him over all kindreds and tongues and nations. And all that dwell upon the earth shall worship him, whose names are not written in the book of life of the Lamb, slain from the foundation of the world. If any man have an ear, let him hear. He that leadeth into captivity shall go into captivity. He that killeth with the sword must be killed with the sword. Here is the patience and the faith of the saints. And I beheld another beast coming up out of the earth, and he had two horns like a lamb, and he spake as a dragon. And he exerciseth all the power of the first beast before him, and causeth the earth and them that dwell therein to worship the first beast, whose deadly wound was healed. And he doeth great wonders, so that he maketh fire come down from heaven on the earth in the sight of men, and deceiveth them that dwell on the earth by the means of those miracles which he had power to do in the sight of the beast, saying to them that dwell on the earth that they should make an image to the beast which had the wound by a sword and did live. And he had power to give life unto the image of the beast, that the image of the beast should both speak and cause that as many as would not worship the image of the beast should be killed. And he caused all, both small and great, rich and poor, free and bond, to receive a mark in their right hand or in their foreheads, and that no man might buy or sell save he that had the mark or the name of the beast or the number of his name. Here is wisdom. Let him that hath understanding count the number of the beast, for it is the number of a man, and his number is six hundred threescore and six.